let's talk about self-documenting code. I've said many a time that I do not like the concept, and I feel like a lot of people completely misuse it, basically as a way to avoid doing documentation. But I've never really expanded upon why I actually hold this opinion, so that's what we're going to be doing today. Now, if you just happen to click on this video and you don't know what self-documenting code is, what it is is the idea where code should be written so clearly that documentation isn't actually needed. So you do this by avoiding complex syntax, by having well-named variables and functions, very easy code flow, and this leads to code that is so easy to understand that even devoid of all documentation, you should still be able to work out what it's actually doing. I think where self-documenting code shines is as a goal to strive towards. I don't think you're ever actually going to achieve it, but by making that your goal, you're going to end up writing much, much cleaner code. And when you have cleaner code, that code is going to be much, much easier to maintain. And I don't just mean by yourself. Obviously, if you leave the project for a couple of months and then come back, if the code is well written, it'll be much easier to start actually working on the project again. But if you're going to onboard new developers, if they see a section of code where you have well-named variables, things like number of people, uh, a boolean that is like the name, the thing it's actually controlling, things like that rather than X, Y, and Z, it makes it far, far easier to see what the code is trying to do, even if at a first glance, you don't exactly know. While I might not be the greatest developer out there, what I do have is a lot of experience looking at code. And I don't just mean a lot of code in a single project. Take something like the Linux kernel. That is, what, like a million, multiple million lines of code? It's a, it's a lot of lines of code. But everything in the Linux kernel is going to be in the same style of other things in the Linux kernel. But looking at code from tons of different projects with tons of different styles and tons of different languages. And from my experience, the idea of self-documenting code seems like a utopian ideal that you can only really strive towards and in a lot of cases ends up just being an excuse for not writing documentation. Now I want to get one thing out of the way. If we're talking about an API, a library, a module, or whatever your language calls the idea of a set of code that is going to be used by another project, even if that project is going to be an internal project, the idea of self-documenting code should not even be in that discussion. If I am using a library, I should never have to do a deep dive of the implementation to understand what a function is actually doing. Sure, doing a deep dive is great to understand you know, how it's doing it, but if you have a function call in your library, I should have extensive documentation on how to use it and what it actually does. I totally get not wanting to have a bunch of comments inside of your code file. In that case, there are external tools you can go and use, which will let you generate documentation from an external file to the code, and that will at least get the job done. When it comes to self-documenting code, there is really only two things the code actually can document. It can document what the code is doing and how the code is doing it. And for a small project or a project that's really only just started out, that might be perfectly fine. But as a project grows older and it grows larger, there are other concerns that start to become very, very important, such as the rationale behind why a design decision was actually done. Let's say your code has gotten to the point where you need to do some extreme optimizations and you go and unravel a loop. Now, someone looking at that code might think you just wrote it in a really dumb way and put the loop back in there because there's no explanation about why that change was actually put in there. Or let's say a library you're calling has a bug with the normal way to call something, so you have to do some like janky workaround to actually make it work properly. Or let's say there is some weird contextual design choice that looking at it, it doesn't really make sense why it was done like that, but for this project, it makes a lot of sense. For example, in the uh, the fast inverse square root, where there are some like really weird sets of numbers that just looking at it, don't make any sense. Now for my personal projects, I don't really care too much about line length, but for someone else's project, they're probably going to have a style guide, and that style guide is going to have a max line length in it, whether that is 80, 100, or even 120 characters, there is going to be some limit on what you can actually do. 
Now, when you have these really long, really well-named identifiers, at some point you are going to start running into line length issues. It may not be instantly, but for some longer checks, it might happen, in which case you have to like break stuff across lines or put those checks inside of variables, which in my mind makes it less clear what's actually happening. What would be easier in that case is having a slightly shorter identifier, not an identifier that doesn't make sense. So if it's something like X coordinates, having it be X chords and then explain this is for coordinates. That I think makes it much, much clearer what you're actually doing. I have heard some people say that if you are using abbreviations that you know, make sense to most people. Things like X chords, that would still be self-documenting by itself. But then there's other people say that you should never use abbreviations if you're doing self-documenting code. Always use the clearest name possible. At the end of the day, there are ways to avoid the line length issues, so it's generally not going to be a major deal. One place where it can be a pretty big problem, though, is when it comes to actually onboarding new developers, while most of the code base is fairly easy to understand. Like, if you're doing fairly normal stuff, self-documenting code can generally work. But there might be some weird things which, unless you've had a lot of experience with them, just don't make any sense. For example, an Ajax call inside a jQuery, no matter what you say about this, and no matter how well you try to self-document it, this thing is an absolute mess to look at. Now, someone might make the argument that, okay, if that's hard to understand, let's just put it behind a function so you don't actually need to see this implementation. You can just see, oh, this is grabbing some data from the server. Okay, fair enough. One time, that might be fine. But let's say you do this 10, 15, 20 times. Now, what you've done is you've got a bunch of these functions that you're calling a single time. And it's basically just making your code much, much harder to actually track where it's going. Effectively, what you're doing is creating a named go-to. I feel like this leads to a fairly spaghetti code-like structure. It can work in minimal usage. If you are very much keeping track of how you actually are using these functions, but going too extreme down that path is going to make stuff way harder to understand. But we haven't even got to the biggest issue with self-documenting code, and that is that you think you're a good programmer, I think I'm a good programmer, and probably most of the people watching this video who know how to program think they're at least somewhat, you know, some level of competent at programming. And even if you don't, you still are probably going to fail to see your own personal idiosyncrasies in the way that you write code. And what this is going to lead to is you're going to write something that makes a lot of sense to you. And it makes a lot of sense to you right now. But if someone else looks at your code, they're going to say, I have no idea what this is supposed to do. And you might look at your code in a couple of months and you've, you know, really improved, and you look at your old code, and you're like, I have no idea what I was doing here. And in cases like that, having a brief comment explaining why in the world you were doing this really will help. Now, keeping all this in mind, I'm not saying go in the complete opposite direction where you comment every single line of code. I went through that period of university where I did exactly that. I would set a variable, comment. I would call a function, comment. I would have an if statement, comment. Every single thing I did, there was a comment. My code was an absolute mess. And honestly, having that many comments makes the code considerably harder to read. Don't do that. If you're doing that, stop right now and just reevaluate all your life decisions. But there is a really good middle ground where you strive towards self-documenting code, but you still use a limited but intentional level of commenting to explain those context-sensitive choices. If you're calling two functions from a library that don't really make any sense why you'd call them together, explain this is to address this problem in the library. Or if you've written a function where you have a weird optimization that you probably wouldn't normally be doing, explain why that's being done. Or if you have some other weird design choice, explain why that's being done. But don't go and comment every single line. Don't go and comment, you know, a well-named variable. If you have a variable that is like, uh, I don't know, light on, and that's a boolean. It's very clear what that's actually controlling. Besides making the code completely unreadable, when you have comments on every single line, what you'll notice is those comments become out of date very, very quickly. Because if you're just explaining what the line is doing, 
you're going to change that line and then just not bother updating it. And as you do that more and more times, those comments basically start contradicting what the code is actually doing. When you have these limited but intentional documentation, it makes it much, much easier to actually go and update those as you actually change stuff. But in a lot of cases, if you're explaining like why something is being done or there is a library bug, you may not actually need to update that when you go and change the code. When you comment your code, what you show is that you actually value the reader's time. It's all well and good to have a good complex understanding of the code base, but if I'm trying to make a modification to one section, I don't need to understand everything that is happening. I want to find the section I'm trying to modify and then go from there. And even with well-named functions, with a large enough code base, you're going to start seeing some things that to a new person in the project are going to sound like they do sort of the same thing. When you have some commenting there, that can sort of alleviate that problem. With the exception of external user-facing documentation or documentation for an API, Make sure that you're explaining why the project is doing something and the design choices that are being done and not the what or the how. The what and the how are explained by the code. In some cases, they can be enhanced, but that shouldn't be the focus. If your focus is on explaining what the code is doing, you've already made the first wrong step. Ultimately, aiming for self-documenting code or clean code or whatever you want to call it is a good idea, and I'm never going to discourage someone from actually going and doing that. But trying to write self-documenting code with absolutely no restraint is going to result in the opposite problem occurring, and the code is going to probably be less clear. I totally get the documentation is boring, but even just a minimal level of documentation is going to be worth the effort if you spend that effort in places where it actually matters. Ultimately, this is just my opinion, and if I was managing a project, if someone tried to submit something that was purely self-documenting, I would basically just tell them to go away. But, if you do like self-documenting code and you think I'm completely wrong, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I am more than happy to have a discussion about it. So if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, please go check out my Patreon subscribe, certainly Barrow Pay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere, and I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robinson Plays where I'm live twice a week and upload about five of YouTube shorts, and this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.